<laughs> okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kate Boltrotsky. I'm a PhD candidate in the Faculty of Health under the supervision of Professor Sandra Grace, Dr. Joanne Bradbury, and Dr. Francis Doran, who are awesome, by the way. And I wish to acknowledge and pay my respects to the Bundjalung people, the traditional custodians of the ancestral lands where I live and work. And I named the title of my presentation as I before E except after C, <laughs> because uh, this is a mnemonic, which is like a, um, it's like a phrase that you would use to remember how to spell something or how to do something. And um, what happened, oh, this is a photo of me, by the way, in Halloween. I was dressed up as a dead, tired mom, which was very symbolic of how I was feeling at this time. Um, so anyways, I was gonna title this uh, presentation, How Long is a Piece of String? Because that's the funny thing you say when people say, when are you gonna finish your PhD? And everyone's like, how long is a piece of string? And ha ha, it means you don't know, anything can happen. But I kept spelling the word piece wrong. And <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe I've gone through school, I've done a four year undergrad and a master's and in my fifth year of my PhD and I still can't spell the word piece without autocorrect telling me I spelt it wrong. And I tried to use mnemonic, mnemonic phrase like I before E except after C and second guessing myself, wait, no, I kept getting it wrong. And I thought, well, that's pretty funny. So there you go, a little laugh. Um, so this is me, uh, just, I'm not actually talking about my presentation or my um, research today so much about the journey. So this is a photo of my family. Now my, my husband's here and he is a photographer and funny enough, we don't really have many good photos of my family. This is the best I could get <laughs> on the years that all us acting goofy, but I'm a parent educator. I'm a mother of three. I've got a background in education. Um, I also am a breathing and meditation teacher and my research is in playful parenting. So I teach parents a form of placeful discipline and um, right in the middle of a big randomized control trial, I've got like 50 parents and it's going fantastic, but I'll talk about that another time. So, yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna to talk to you today is when everything, what I've done, when everything has gone wrong, because I feel like so many things have gone wrong and I know everyone has ups and downs in this journey, it's, it's just normal. Um, so what's happened to me is I failed my confirmation I started off as a master's student, uh, failed the confirmation, which is a huge surprise and shock to everyone. Um, pandemic, so I had submitted my ethics application and got everything through for my face-to-face -face parenting intervention in March 2020. So we all know what happened then. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, my supervisor was like, just wait, everything will be fine. I was like, no, this is not gonna be fine. So I had to redo my whole project to be online, which has been fantastic. Actually, it's been great. Um, I've had to take interruptions. Uh, I started as a master's student and transferred to PhD, which meant I needed to get a publication. So in that process, I had countless rejections, desk rejections, all sorts of rejections uh, from my publications, ethics rejections. My hard drive failed in the middle of doing all this. Luckily, my husband is a tech genius and he helped me get through it. It was so stressful. Um, we've had death in the family overseas and I couldn't go home, which is really upsetting. You know, all these personal things, vicarious trauma, something really traumatic happened at our, my, our, child's, our children's school, um, which really affected the whole family. Um, and we also got COVID, I got COVID four times and I had severe um, brain fog. I couldn't think um, really bad mental health issues that I've never experienced in my life. So um, delusional thoughts, like really, really scary for me. So all these things happened, I'm still here. <laughs> um, so some of the things I just wanted to talk to you about is how I got through these. And the biggest thing was frequent self-care. So this is a photo of me. I was being a massage model, <laughs> my friend. It's actually harder work than it looks. And <laughs> getting you to move around, uh, but it looks great. And, um, but this is really nice, isn't it? But how often do you go for a massage? maybe once every six months or once a year or something, you know, it's not really enough. So my whole thing was that it had to be frequent self-care. So self-care is a buzzword right now, isn't it? We hear all self-care, what is it? Is it getting to drink your cup of coffee in the morning uninterrupted or is it getting to go for a 20 minute jog? It's a buzzword, but 
um, the World Health Organization actually has defined self-care and there are self-care interventions. And it's a much broader term, like taking care of ourselves is bigger than just doing a few things here and there. It's about promoting health, preventing disease, um, mental and emotional well-being, and being able to access. It's about empowerment. So being able to access the resources you need when you need them, it, when you're at the bottom of the barrel, are you going to know what to do? So this is really self-care. It's much bigger than getting to go for your walk in the morning, which is also important. Um, so some of the things I did for self-care um, was making sure that I did... Now, this is just me. Everyone's different, of course, like um, Emma's presentation yesterday was almost identical, I think. Uh, daily breathing and meditation. So I'm, I'm one of those annoying people who get up at 4 or 5 in the morning and I do meditation and yoga. And, and I know that if I don't do that, I'm going to be a wreck for the rest of the day and it won't happen so I do it in the morning um, exercising really like getting your heart rate going because I sit we sit so much um, at the computer so much it's crazy uh, moving and stretching is also not just exercising but actually moving the body like you know getting that tension we keep all of it stored here so it's like you know, moving your body and our socializing we spend so I do I spend a lot of time sitting behind a screen and it can get really dangerous not seeing people at first it was great COVID came along and I was like yeah this is awesome I don't have to see anyone but it started to take its toll so getting out and seeing people and accessing professional services therapy I was the type of person who was like I don't need that it's all good but yeah, if there's a time, you know, being able to access that. And then finally, uh, finding a listening buddy, which we'll talk a little bit more later in a minute, is was so important. Someone who's going to actually listen to you it might not be your partner because they might not have the capacity to listen to you. So someone that is going to understand what you're going through. Um, what happens when I got all these rejections, fails and feedback? Um, it's really hard when you send you, know, you put your hard earned everything and then you get this feedback and it's like oh um we get very we can get defensive or I used to get defensive like no I, that's not what I meant and no it's, no <laughs> um so I guess what I learned was to take time to process it if you get if I got an email and I got upset just I wouldn't send anything back just read it wait a day and revisit it and then I'm like oh actually they said something really useful there and it wasn't as mean as I thought. And, oh, they're trying to help me. Um, so letting go of that defense, like, oh, I can't listen to what they're saying, was really helpful. Um, and then just feeling all the emotions. When you, If you get a rejection or if you get whatever is going to happen, just allowing yourself to feel upset and you want to have a big cry, have a cry, like have a laugh, whatever, have a scream or a rage. Um, let it like really feel that emotions and then go back to it go back to the feedback and you'll find oh yeah there is something there um, not always 95% of the time it's constructive maybe it's <laughs> not always <laughs> great but um, it's a hard process it's not easy and again finding someone to talk to anytime there was a rejection or a failure or something um, and then motivation so I think Philosophers for uh, since the beginning of time, since the beginning of philosophers, have wondered where the source of motivation comes from. Like, is it intrinsic? Is it extrinsic? Like, how do we keep doing the things that we want to do, and why do we do them? Um, this is part of my parenting stuff that I'm I really love. Is it willingness? You know, what is it? Um, but for me, the motivation to keep going when things got really hard really came down to how I was feeling energetically. So if I was feeling depleted and I hadn't been taking care of myself, there was no way I could do my work. There's no way I could think. So for me, it was like, oh, if I just take care of myself, I'll be able to keep going. So that was the self-care part. Um, the other thing I've learned about this motivation, I don't know if it's motivation, but whatever uh dropping expectations so we have that and then we get published <laughs> and when we just look and say oh, i'm going to get a publication i want to finish my, my um also self-compassion not being so hard on yourself this uh, great studies on this how the more self-compassion phd students or students have on themselves that the better the outcomes are the better the mental health um, better less depression less anxiety the easier you are on yourself actually and then start comparing your journey so yes there's going to be people i know who have well there's people i know have smashed their phds out in three years with five publications and i'm like 
five years in and I'm like, oh, I don't know when I'm going to finish. And as soon as I stopped comparing myself to other people, I was like, all right, whatever, this is what it is. It's just such a relief. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now, I've got a couple minutes, yeah, five minutes. So we're going to do a listening activity. This is something I do with my parents and my parenting, not my parents, <laughs> my parents in my parenting programs is listen. So we have person A and person B and Person A, you're going to talk to person B about something that's been bothering you. And person B, you're going to listen. So it's active listening means you don't interrupt and say, oh, yeah, that happened to me one time. Or oh, that happened to my mom. Um, you just listen. Nod your head like, yep, I hear you. And maybe a prompting question if they get stuck or something. And then at two minutes, we'll switch. And then we'll see how it feels to be heard and be validated. And, yeah. So go. <laughs> talk to someone. It can be um, something, you know, appropriate. But Hello. anything that's bothering you about your research or your work. <laughs> so if you're not near someone, just move. I'll tell you when to switch. Be a good listener. I'll tell you when to switch. Just keep going if you... 20 more seconds. Yeah. Okay, so person A, you can wrap up what you're saying and then switch. Now the other person gets to share. Okay, so make sure you both get a chance to talk. So one more minute. Yes, we switched. One more minute for the person B. Not really. Okay, maybe just finish up your sentence <laughs> and let's bring, I know, it's two minutes, it's not long enough, is it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can continue this conversation as long as you want. So um, maybe we can talk about how that felt in the question time, but I just wanted to give you that experience of what it feels like to be heard and to listen. So this is something that I, we found is so valuable for our parents in the parenting studies is just feeling heard. And as a student, just feeling heard, feeling validated. And um, yeah, it's really great. So that's one of the things we've been doing. I'll probably talk about the research next year if you yeah, come along. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, it's been fantastic. So that's all from me. Thank you.
Thanks. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got you guys to do all the work. <laughs> um, teacher trick. Thank you. That was so validating because oh. we've all had all of this stuff go wrong. <laughs> so it just felt nice that we're not alone. Yeah. Um, you probably need longer than that and maybe get a listening, a real listening buddy, but it's awesome. Yeah. So actually I was taking a lot of notes when you were talking because um, mm. we've been talking, myself and Rebecca, about a whole lot of mental health stuff that we can do with students over the next year as part of the mm. SCPA. So some of the stuff you were saying, I took some notes and then yeah. I was thinking, oh, we could do some wellbeing weeks and yeah. Yeah, so thank you. That's yeah, amazing. we can talk about there's a listening buddy, a partnership is what it's called, and it's like mm -hmm. a, it's a thing where yeah, you have a set, a, a set amount of time and, yeah, we can talk more about it where you actually lis listen, active listening, and it's really powerful. So Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, questions or comments from the... Thanks for the presentation. I um, <laughs> love listening exercises and things oh, like cool. that. I, I think we should all be learning some empathy exercises and listening exercises. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, just a, and this is just a comment, really. Um, I would have liked to do it for longer. Like yeah. I feel like just starting. Oh, you know? totally. And, and, yeah, and it's not long enough. Open stuff up. You think? Yeah. I'd love to sit a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. Usually a listening partnership, you do like twenty minutes each, or even half an hour each. So hour a week. Yeah, something. You can organise with yeah. somebody that you know that you feel comfortable doing this and you say, oh, okay, let's do listening time or something. And yep. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, I think you want to have a question? Yeah, just a follow-up. It felt really nice to be on the seat doing the activity rather than letting someone else do it like in class. So it was very valuable to me. Um, Stick with, I can't hear you. Go. Yeah, it was just so good to see that presentation, Kate. Mm. It just rhymes well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I do this with my students as well. And you taught in, we taught in the unit that we taught this to 700 students. We did this listening activity in one of my undergraduates. So, yeah. And cool. uh, so many setbacks through your journey. Mm. Uh, it's quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, everyone kind of goes, oh, I thought I had it hard, you know, <laughs> nine months on ethics or whatever, you know. But yeah. that was a lot. You went through yeah. a lot. It was a lot, yeah. Yes. And having a good support person like this guy was, yeah, you, <laughs> was really, you know, that, was, that helped having well, people. Well, we're really pleased that you, mm. you know, came back because we saw you last year. Yeah. And um, I think there's been fantastic development. Yeah. Yeah. It's been good. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you again. Yeah. <laughs>